Right, uh, this video is about uh, the Zach Hardegger uh, story, basically, and how he got uh, caught at the beginning of September taking cocaine uh, after a match, or during a match, he got caught just after in the post match drug testing against uh, against Leeds on the 8th of September. He's the third player this year. There's been two others, including Ranky Chase, who have been done um, for taking drugs, uh, not performance enhancing narcotics, and. Um, Basically, there is an issue here because Zach Hardaker's uh, he's he's got a bad bad track record really in the last five six years. Um, he came on scene in twenty ten for Featherstone Rovers and did really well for them. Scored a hat trick on debut, brilliant. Um, he went to Leeds, big money move. Uh, and while he was at Leeds, they they basically had issue after issue of him off the pitch. Um. 2013, he got dropped from the England squad for the World Cup because he breached uh, team rules. So curfew. Uh, a year later, against uh, another team, he homophobically abused one of their players, uh, Monaghan. And he got a five game man and a fine of 300 quid, which is pittance, really. Uh, he got two and a half grand fine from England to RFL in 2013. So that's by twenty fourteen he's he's he has been in a bit of trouble at this point. Lee there were some other minor incidents while he was at Leeds that they um tried to work with him through. Then he unfortunately went out um and with another teammate, um went out and got involved and assaulted a twenty two year old student in Leeds City Centre. And there was the legal case uh, was settled and he was found not there was found to be not enough evidence to gain a prosecution, even though he willingly admitted um the assault or being part of an assault, been involved in a fight. So he, he paid victims fees to uh to the um the the twenty two year old in question and paid compensation. So he basically was that. And then obviously now he's been caught doing this. Um He's he's been provisionally suspended by the club. He's not going on the World Cup tour uh, in the month. Uh, so basically, where do we go from here? Well, there are two options. One, well, he's, he's guaranteed to get a two year ban, or, 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 uh, up to two years off. Um, and I tried to upload a video earlier, and it went a bit wrong, and I got really in depth about it. But basically, um, his track record off the pitch is shocking, and even on it, he's been done for being a homophobe, which basically goes in hand in hand with discrimination in general. So he's not a nice guy. Um, He's basically got nothing going from it at the moment, really. Uh, Castleford, his current employer, um, they have two options. They can stick with him and get him through therapy because Leeds put him for anger management because uh, he's uh, clearly got a temper on him. He's clearly a violent, violent person. And um, I don't know, really, uh, obviously Castleford lost the final to Leeds at the weekend, which was what I was sort of predicting might happen in my previous video to do with the subject. So. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's complicated. He's he's given a statement today saying he's sorry he's let one down, which he has. Um, but who's gonna to want to touch him now? Because he's gonna get a, a very long holiday, basically. Um, and where do we go from here with him? Because he's now left Carlsford up creek without a paddle in the fact that they've now got to find someone next season by February. Uh, for the World Club Challenge to play at fullback, wing or centre, extra. They've got to find a new player. Be it, they might find from the youth squad, the under 18s and 19s and 21s, the reserves. That's great. That could be a chance for a, a decent player to come through. Or they um, they don't help him and uh, they, they go, might we wash around with you because Leeds have problems. Uh, he went to Penrith for a brief spell and that did not work out. He was completely out of sorts, unfit, un and. and and he clearly has a problem with substance abuse because, and and and, and violence. He's 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 had to go to anger management. He's been cool. He's 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 homophobic. Clearly, he's got a problem with his attitude and his attitude towards minority groups. Um, he's a very talented player. I, I he's not my favourite player. I think there are better fullbacks, wingers, and centres. Um, not only in England but also in Australia who, um, are better than him. And there are some ex players who are better than him. He, there's no doubt about that. He is tempered. His talent, his talent has been overshadowed by his his, his ill discipline, um, and he runs the risk of ending up like Paul Gascoigne, uh, basically. And Gaza, as we all know, are uh, went off the rails completely. 
Um, and again, he's, he's, he was one of the most talented players you could ever possibly... In fact, he was more talented. Uh, he was one of the best foot players ever to, to grace a foot pitch, really. Uh, even in my eyes. And uh, I was a baby when he was doing Italian 90, but I remember Euro 96 and that goal against Scotland and the fact he basically did it by himself. Ripped the whole right-hand side of Scotland's defence open like a scalpel. Got in a surgeon's hand and then just blasted it past Sullivan and goal. You know, you, you get moments like that. Zach Hardaker's had moments like that. He clearly, however, cannot control his temper. He's got a problem with drugs and alcohol. Um, and he clearly is a bigot because he's he's clearly a homophobe and that also goes along with racism and also any other sexism as well basically he's discriminatory against those who he doesn't class as equals which is everyone else basically in some some you know so he's going to touch him because he's he's stuffed up the world cup plans for for Wayne Bennett um and he's a he's a good player but what happens from here? There's, there's, a, there's another issue is there as well. There is an issue with high class sportsmen and women doing not performance on drugs but narcotics. And there's an, there's, a, there's an attitude and there's a sweep under the carpet because from what I gathered from the news report I, I watched on BBC half an hour ago and what I read on online on The Guardian about the other two players also, one of them I haven't heard of before, Rangi Chase I have, um, that there is a culture of a lad's culture and a lass's culture, a ladette's culture, are basically a culture of right, okay, we've, we're on the tour bus, we've had the game, post match, let's go on a session. Now, whether that is league wide or sports wide, I, I don't know, but when I was playing rugby at my local rugby club, there was a booze culture, my mate's cricket club, there is a booze culture, they even have a joke, I mean, this is at low levels, but they have a joke that we are a drinking club with a cricket problem. And I went on one of their social evenings, and oh my god, it was, it was, and, and it just reminded me of, of going on away days with the lads at rugby when we were going to an away ground and we were going to play um, somewhere down the A4, up the M4, wherever we were going, in the South East, in our division. Um, basically, afterwards, we, were, we would play the game, same as a home game, and we would decamp to the bar and get absolutely trolled. Um, and I, yeah simple and I'm surprised we didn't destroy the rugby club a lot quicker than it is falling apart anyway but that's an issue there um, where do we go from here just the sport has to look itself in the face and Zach Arday has to look in the face if he has, commits penance and he's contrite about it and he, he, he comes he gets clean and he focuses on his sport side and being a role model for kids or he's going to end up in prison or dead that's it because there's so many other talented sportsmen and women who have gone down this path and have gone Hope Solo US women's goalkeeper she's got a check it off the field um, disciplinary problem legal issues Gaza is a prime example Matt Stevens at Bath when he was caught doing cocaine along with all his teammates there was a big issue there Bob Probert ice hockey drugs alcohol no, that's four four different sports he's now five Diego Maradona six there's many examples here. So, what do we do? I mean, um, there's another issue with sportsmen taking performance enhancing. Uh, there's a lot in the news about that, about the athletics. This is a separate thing, and it seems to be more hush hush. The paper this morning gave two out of four, out of the, out of the, out of the column. Twenty percent of it was to the Zach Hardaker bit, and the rest was about the England squad moving forward and the result from Leeds being class. But that was it. They basically, oh yeah, we don't want to talk about this. Oh no, we can't talk about this. Oh no, and that is another culture that persists. Is they've got we've got a break from this drink drug lad ladet sesh culture to be more professional. Yes, you need characters in the dressing room. Yes, you you need a bit of fun and a bit of stress because. Being a professional sportsman, you're under a lot of limelight and you've got cameras in your face, you don't have a private life because you're a celebrity and you do get you know, hassled and I get that and I understand. But the whole Ben Stokes thing, you can't go out lamping people in night outside night nightclubs in Bristol or Leeds. Simple. Whether it's in self-defence or in this case, Sakai, they could batter someone. But in Ben Stokes' case, I think it is self-defence and it's, it's going to end up in the same lines. He's going to have to get anger management or he's going to have to basically uh, fully come clean about what happened that night. He's another one who could go down the same route as Zach Hardacre with the boozing. So uh, there's parallels in many sports here. So, but what happens now? He's going to face a two year ban. That's looking given. 
because it was caught by a test, not by the police or, or admitting to it that he's got a problem. We had a cast for a go. Regardless of the, the national side, we had a cast for a go because he's on their books. And how long has he signed for? Do they go through, right, you were going to get help? You going to go help? Or, no, your contract's terminated. Goodbye, you're out the door. No, we did not. This is no zero tolerance. You've been told before from a previous employer. You were bye bye. No one here. And it's a 50 50 because we live in a society now we have to help everyone and they all, everyone deserves a second chance. He's had about eight or nine second chances. So, what do we do? He's exceptionally talented, but what other skills does he have apart from rugby league? Because he's got to have a life after sport as well. That's another issue that I've mentioned in previous videos. And I don't. He's a thug, he's a homophobe, he's a bigot, he's a dry addict. He's clearly got a problem, man, and someone hasn't stepped in and helped him. That's another issue that was famous with Gaza and Probert and other. There is an issue there, and people know and don't do anything. They enable him because they let him get away with it. There is no way he could have taken drugs before that game against Leeds on September the 8th and fail because cocaine stays in the system very short amount of time. There is no way he could have not taken it and no one seen it. So someone out, one of his teammates knows or was doing it as well and didn't get tested that day. But the fact it took from the 8th to him being told on Thursday you'll be dropped and they had to tell the rugby league he's not playing in this match because we've got some in our squads, he's been dropped. And then it comes clear of the day. Come on, a month, come on. So we're in a bit of an impasse right here. We're in a bit of like a woo stage because where do we go from here? How long does the process last? And uh, now the season's over. So what happens now? The fact that we're two more doing recreational drugs. That's the word I was before. Narcotics, recreational drugs. Two months. There is an underlying issue here that the RFL, rugby union, football, cricket, whatever the sport, because there's been a cricketer caught uh, for the third time. And cricket's policy is they give you three chances. They do levels of intervention. And he's a young one as well. It's not like he's an experienced player. He's a young 19-year-old. So I forget his name. He's in the press. So there have been several incidents in this summer and autumn of sportsmen and women getting done doing recreational drugs in season. Because there's a flaw in the system. You can do it if you're injured or in the off-season. You can take as much gear as you want because off-season testing is not universal over every sport. And there are ways to get around the system. And two uh, rugby league players in the New Zealand setup got done after a game in a nightclub in a public sting operation taking cocaine. And their excuse was we're so fucking pissed. And this is their words, not not me effing blow. We are so effing pissed we do not know what we were doing. So it's again the drink culture and the drug culture sweeping on the carpet. They got between them they got dropped from the national squad, fair enough. Told they're not going to the World Cup, fair enough. Between them, four game down. By their clubs. That's it. Because it took place away from a sporting environment and they weren't caught by the testers, they were caught by the police. That's the issue. So, anyway, I've gone on long enough. Uh, there's clearly problems here, it's more than just Zach Hardacre, although he's got a lot more issues than just an issue with stress or mental health or whatever it is, because they go hand in hand. He's clearly got problems, he's clearly got a violent, violent an anger issue, a violence issue. He's got views that are very stone age in obviously homophobia and that links in with women, race, religion. He's got views there that obviously he has been called for and he has had to apologise for. I think it's more to do with his anger management, but he still has said those things on a pitch against an opposition player. I think you're basically, he basically calls it a poof. Or he accused someone of being gay or, or made a reference to someone's sexuality. Um, and what annoys me is not that he did the crime. He got punished. He got he got a five game suspension. He got banned. He got fined. That's not a problem. It, the amount of the fine was three hundred pounds. Really quick. That's why more minority groups don't get involved. That is why more gay, lesbian, and bisexual people hide their sexuality in sport. And that's why more minorities and and women are held back. It's because the fines are pointless. He earns that in a, in a minute. What good is that? Anyway, 
if you're scrolling through, please like and subscribe below. If you've got any comments, please post them below. And uh, if you're on my Twitter feed, please uh, watch and share this and retweet. And if you're on my Facebook, again, please watch and share. And I will have another video for you soon. I've now got to upload this. Get this online. Get the word out. And um, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting. Ta-da.